All right, guys. Me Elf Net Designs, and in this video, I'm going to try to uh, walk you through building a repeater out of a pair of Maxon SM4000 series radios. Um, these are what I have a 4450s or UHFs. They have a little bit of variation from what I have the service manual for. I have the service manual for the 4150 and uh, we'll get into that in a minute what some of the differences are aside from the band other than that they're pretty much the same <coughs> um, and what i've got what, I have is a, what, what you'll need of course is a pair of radios you'll need some kind of repeater controller um, in my case i am building a controller out of an arduino nano on a protoboard in a case that that has all got its own video somewhere on the internet you will need some wire um most importantly you're going to need a soldering iron and solder um i'm using uh, 60 40 this thin small stuff here and i have a 40 watt 42 watt iron weller um I am going to be sleeving the wires when they come out of the radio at some point. It also helps if you have a service manual for either the 4150 or 4450. Axon looks like that. Either one will work. Um, I'm going to go into a difference between the two in a minute. Yeah, you'll need, of course, wire. <coughs> uh, I think this is. 22 gauge or 24 or something uh, yeah, 22 gauge uh, wire strippers so this is your basic hand tools you'll need a flat bladed screwdriver to open the radio simply put it in there and prize the pop the top off <coughs> so what are we doing well if things act right on my desk and quit collapsing within themselves like a super massive star, we'll get on it. And we'll have to show you how to open it with a slot, put it in, and pop it right off. And put this somewhere where well, hopefully it won't fall. I have so much shit piled here, it's outrageous, crazy. I really need to go through here and clean this crap up. This look, it doesn't need to be here anymore. So we're going to use the power cable. So the book open. Okay, this is the receiver radio right here. This receiver using brown, black, and green here. This is the color code that I came up. So we're going to start with the receiver, and I'm going to show you what I'm making connections <coughs> within such radio because. There is some track scraping you'll have to do. Let me stand up here, not my chair. Now, up close and personal. You get on. What is this? J six, which is this line here. You're going on pin one with your green, pin three, which is ground with a black. And then if you look, there's the brown soldered onto this trace, this little header that is six and five right there. Six, five, six, five. They are odd number, even number. Okay. One, three, five, two, four, six. Brown is on that trace. And that brown is, and this is what they are it's important that you get the brown because that's what's going to fire your controller that is your core carrier operated relay or squilch or whatever you want to call it black is j6 number three pin three uh, uh, p8 five and six yeah, it's called p8 in the manual it corresponds with the manual p8 Black is on P6, which is that long one. It's here. 
ground. Green is on J6 number one, which is your discriminator audio. That's going to be your receiving audio and your controller. Okay, that takes care of this radio. Also, I'm thinking, well, later on, I'll get into it, maybe another video or something. I don't need the lid to it. Put it back on. I'm going to pull power off of this LM7805 in here for 5 volts to run the Arduino controller. A little controller in the box. And just tie on the ground. I'll throw one of them. So we can set this receiving radio aside. Oh, you'll also need a programming cable and the appropriate software. Um, I don't know. I'm not in the know. Where is it? Oh, it's here somewhere. There it is. I'm going to show you what the programming cable looks like. And you'll probably need. Uh, I built this. You're going to need 9 pin female to 25 pin male <coughs> thing. And this is your programming cable. SPC 4000 looks like that on that end looks like this on this end and I'll just walk you through this real quick with the other radio how to do this because I've been asked before in the past in person how to do this and people just don't understand me telling them not to show them <coughs> when you pop the top on the radio these wires on here you're going to see this little header, little white header, J7. This little white mate and lock right here. That is where this goes. Line it around, plug it in like so. That's where it goes. Next thing you want to do is you want to pull this board off, this little module this is your option relay for your audio pull it off the reason is is we want to get on a pin pin number one right there with a little clip or probe or whatever comes on your cable or if you build a cable god help you hope you get it right that's so we can now power the little rib circuitry that is in here from the radio the radio does need to be on and how to program well it's off it's not plugged in but i'm going to simulate it you're going to hold down the p this one and turn it on it should say prog on the screen and from there go on your computer with this connected of course to the software the smc4004 i believe what it is and you read the radio change it write it when you're done you just reverse the steps disconnect your cable do not forget to put the board back in that's important if you don't put it back in you'll get an error saying something's wrong with the radio or whatever and it won't start make sure that it's back in there now under the modification for repeater use there's another board i think it came out of the receiver uh well, the transmit radio here, I have yellow, blue, and black. We know where black goes on pin 3 of this header right here. It's your ground. Blue will go on pin 4, J6 number 4. That's your push to talk line. And yellow will go on LK10. LK10 may not be present in the 4150. Basically, no, it goes on LK10, pin number 12, and this is your mic audio. If you don't have an LK10, you can get on that little piece right there on a capacitor or inductor, or you can get over here on pin number three of the mic jack. That's your transmitter audio. And of course you route these out they will come right out through there and you hook them up accordingly now what do these wires do well of course yellow is your transmit audio blue is push to talk and black is ground now 
program it for the other side of the repeater frequencies. And uh, yeah, that's that's it for that part of the tutorial walkthrough. This here I still need to work on, but once you have receive and transmit audio, core and push to talk leads coming out of your radios. Yeah, if you know how to build repeaters and how to operate with controllers, yeah, you should have no problem. Now, I think this core, it's not like a Motorola, so you might have to go for a, the Motorola I think goes low. I believe this one goes high. So you're going to have to adjust your core and your controller or COS or whatever your controller you're using. The carrier detect or whatever you're using in there to be either high or low. I can't remember. I know it's opposite of what Motorola uses for Maxim. And, uh, yeah, that's about all I have to say on this subject. Other than uh, make sure that you are authorized to run a repeater on the frequency that you're using. Whether you're a ham, if you have a ham license. Uh, a lot of these radios... Will go into the ham bands, the, the 4450s will if you retune the VCO. Um, there's a procedure for that. I'm not going to go into it because I um, don't use ham radio stuff. Um, uh, GMRS, make, just make sure you're licensed accordingly. Um, these are wideband radios, so the only places that you're going to be able to use them, at least in the United States, are in GMRS or amateur. And yeah, that's. Uh, this thing here will be another video once it's done. I'll explain it. I'm still in the process of prototyping some switching and uh, stuff on it. Code stuff. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's uh. That is your basic connections to the radio to getting a controller going whether it's a repeater maker or some homebrew thing or a community repeater uh, panel or whatever whatever you desire and, uh, and like always guys if you like the video thumb up leave a comment any questions that's what the comment section is for. I will try to help in any way I can. I've built so many of these in the past. I probably could solve anyone's problems. But, but yeah. Um, and always, guys, I will see you in the next video.